rule your time. You have no idea who we are. But you'll soon find out. This Star Trek, packed with special effects and action, aliens and familiar faces. Star Trek boldly going where it's been plenty of times before, the big screen. Star Trek Beyond opens today. It's directed by Justin Lin, who has beamed in from the fast and the furious. Eli Glasner is here with his Friday film review. Eli. So I'll tell you, Carol, when they first announced that the guy who gave us the Vroom Vroom series, Fast and Furious, was taking the helm of the USS Enterprise, I was a little worried. And then I saw Kirk riding his motorcycle on the alien planet, and I was a little more worried. But what I've realized is both Fast and Furious and Star Trek are supercharged soap operas about families, these characters thrown together. And when we catch up with the crew of the Enterprise, they're in the middle of this long journey, and that family is fraying at the edges, not just what's happening to their ship, but Chris Pine as Kirk is losing his sense of direction. He's been at space for so long, he doesn't really know whether he's cut out for the job anymore. Take a listen as he talks about his father volunteered for the job, but his reason to get into the Federation was quite different. My dad joined Starfleet because he believed in it. I joined on a dare. You joined to see if you could live up to him. You spent all this time trying to be your father. And now you're wondering just what it means to be you. Now there's a hint in the captain's dialogue, actually when he's recording the captain's log, where he says space is feeling episodic. This is a return to the traditions of the classic Trek TV series. That's what Star Trek Beyond is, a supersized episode with adventure, a crisis, a new villain, the crew stranded on an alien planet, outgunned, scattered, and facing Krull, Idris Elba. You won't recognize him under the makeup as a fearsome new opponent, fearsome technology. There is Idris for what we can see in that swarm of I don't know, evil polygon shredding the Enterprise. And after I've spent a summer of complaining about these Mobius strip of movies, the self-referential cinema, Beyond finds a way to boldly chart a new course while still paying tribute to Gene Roddenberry's original directive. How does it compare to J.J. Abrams' Star Trek? So I adored Abrams' last two adventures, particularly the first one. I thought it was breathtaking. I thought it had moments of grace. I wouldn't describe this movie the same way. What Lynn provides is action, adrenaline, chase and fight scenes blending into kinetic blurs, cinematography, at times an overload of spinning spaceships, but there are some stunning sequences. The ship plummeting like a stone. All I'll tell you is I yelped in my chair a couple of times, but I think what Lynn also understands is that the real power of Trek, it's not that plummeting enterprise, it's the family, the ensemble, that is the real special effect of this film. Kirk and Spock, that relationship at an impasse. And I want to point out one of my favorites, underappreciated, John Cho as Sulu, the pilot. Take a look. You have no idea who we are. Oh, we can't just jumpstart it, sir. Mr. Sulu, you can fly this thing, right? You kidding me, sir? There you go. Not much of a part, just pushing that thruster forward, but he makes the most of it. I could go on talking about Simon Pegg as Scotty, Zoe Saldana as Uhuru, uh, Sophia Botella as a new character, Rayla. But what I will say is that this is a return to the original optimism, that hopeful tone of the series, boldly renewing itself, ready for more. Four stars out of five. Eli, thank you. My pleasure.